All right, welcome to Fired Up with Rad. This episode is sponsored by softrep.com and crateclub.com. Badass gear picked for badasses like yourself. Go check out crateclub.com and uh, get a box of cool stuff delivered to your door. And a big shout out to the crew uh, with the Ready Man Studios for allowing me to use their studios here and Black Rifle Coffee for allowing us to be inside of that as well. My guest today is one that we would probably all like to ask a couple questions to. Uh, it, her name is Inma Day, and she is the transplant coordinator here uh, in Utah that works with people who are looking for certain types of body parts that they need. And I want to just welcome you to the show. Thank you. Yes. So tell me, Inma, how does one... Ab- okay, so transplants, right? Like what specifically transplant parts do you work with? Uh, I work with ab- abdominal um, so organs, so that would be your liver, kidney, and pancreas. Okay, okay. And so in order to get on the list to get a transplant, there is a list, right? Correct. So like I'm, I'm sick and I need to get a pancreas. What are the steps for how do I mean, I've been through it. I'm a diabetic. I've been taking insulin. Then what happens? So usually your um, your doctor will refer you to the transplant team. Um, it depends on which organ you need. Um, and there's a, an evaluation that you have to go through. Um, you have to um, not only just medically, um, there's a, a social uh, aspect of it. Make sure that you have enough social support. Um, and also um, surgical. Are you actually surgically able to, to receive this transplant? Wow. So there's, there are some, uh, evaluations that have to be made on the, the patient. Like, you know, can you come out of the anesthesia? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. and, uh, or whatever other, you know, issue could happen. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's real. You're transplanting a, like a pancreas. Right. Right. So, um, cause sometimes when, when you get to the point that you need a, a, a organ transplanted, um, there are other, um, other medical issues that are going on. Mm-hmm. So is your heart strong enough to, to handle this? Is, you know, are you actually um, have the, the ability to, to walk and do physical therapy and mm-hmm. all those things? That, um, so, because we want to give you the transplant, absolutely, but we, wanna, we need to make sure that you're going to be able to, to come through not just the surgery, but also the recovery of it. Right, so you guys are looking at the, the, the life plan, the life mm-hmm. care plan of mm-hmm. the patient. It's yeah. like, hey, you're coming in this way. We know that you need this, okay? So mm-hmm. to our listeners who are listening to this that may need a transplant, you know, that are trying to get on the list, you know, this is this is where you listen up. And so you make sure that you're healthy enough to get the transplant. Mm-hmm. Do eat your healthy vegetables and those things. And mm-hmm. I just want you to be healthy, people. So mm-hmm. I'm just saying if you have to get a transplant, you know, take care of yourself as best you can yeah. dealing with your search situation. Mm-hmm. And then remember that the road to recovery is another aspect of the mm-hmm. situation. It's mm-hmm. not just, boom, I've got it. Like mm-hmm. my friend who is a type one mm-hmm. who would be waiting for a pancreas, mm-hmm. he still needs to recover from the surgery. Right. And it has to mesh. Yeah. Right. You may be type O and type O. So like type O blood type is your, what your blood would be matched up to a donor. Mm-hmm. Right. So if I'm a B negative, then I would need a B negative donor. Correct. Um, so yes, so it depends on what or what blood type you are. So there's um, there's some bloods that the blood types that are more compatible than others. Mm-hmm. But yeah, definitely um, that is a huge thing that things need to to match up. Sometimes hearts um, are kind of like the only patients that sometimes don't need to, oh. but for the most part you will. So so once you get into the list, then you will uh, be on the O list or the A list or the B list, you know, depending of the, the type, the blood type. So, so certain lists have certain, um, now it, okay. The list, mm-hmm. is it specific to Utah? So if I'm in Utah and I have, you know, a certain blood type, um, how does that work? Or like if I'm a pot, like is a B or what's a pot, what's a, what's a common blood type? A the most common yeah. is O. Is O. Mm-hmm. And so if I have an O blood type, mm-hmm. where would I be able to get my uh, liver from? Well, so typically you'll have more donors. So, so, and this has changed recently in the last couple of weeks, actually. Um, so, uh, so you most likely will get like 
local within the area. Mm -hmm. Right now, um, we we used to have more like um, uh, like a national list and a regional list and and, and so on. So the the organ will be offered first to local and then you know kind of like concentric circles. Um, and now they're using a, like a nautical miles. Um, nautical the, miles. Yeah, uh, I know it's really interesting. Interesting. It just came up, so I, um, there's a lot still that I have to, to so look for. But instead of 300 miles, they're saying 300 nautical miles, mm -hmm. right, which is a further. Yeah. So that's good for the for the client or for the patient that needs it in mm -hmm. a wider area, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we've been able to, to have more, um, receive more offers recently since this change. So it's been great. Sure. Um, but yeah, so once you get listed and the list is a national list. Um, so uh, so it's, it's managed by UNAS, which is the organization that, that kind of ensures that everything is done fair mm -hmm. and ethically. And uh, Right, because there is another side mm -hmm. to this world, right? Mm -hmm. And you just made me think about it mm -hmm. when you said ethically. Yeah. And so the fact that there is other places that are taking and harvesting or mm -hmm. trying to take people's human trafficking yeah you know you think that they're just putting them into some random hotel room and drugging but they're taking oh. their parts yes no it's, it needs to stop the, that needs to yes stop. that is no something that we will never uh, no that's you know? that's awful right but <laughs> yeah so this is so what is it called una you know you know oh mm -hmm. you know is making sure that everything is all Mm -hmm. on the level yeah so mm -hmm. so basically in order to be a donor you have to obviously agree to, yes. to donate um so we you know we can really accept i have a you. i'm a marrow donor <laughs> Oh, great. Yeah, a lot, you may no one may know that about me, but yeah. I went to a bad religion concert. Oh, okay, uh -huh. you know, rock and roll, and was and bad religion. Instead of like saying buy our shirts, they're like, please sign up to become a donor. Yeah, for bone marrow transplant. Yeah, yeah. and if you get to be if if you're a match, and they swabbed us at the concert, mm -hmm. I was like, well, I guess NSA here, government, take my DNA at a concert. But I got a card in the mail saying you've been matched up to become a donor. If we mm -hmm. were to call on you, be ready for that yeah and uh for the longest time i was always hesitant about being a donor because yeah. i had this myth uh -huh. and, I, and i know it's a myth because yeah if it's on your license and you say you're a donor like the paramedics don't want to like resuscitate uh, you tell me tell me that's not no, real no i'm sure you know and uh, that's not what it is i'm sure their 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 main goal is to to make sure that you survive the the injury and and then you know it of course there's so, people that don't want to be resuscitated and, and right. they have um, agreed to do that. But like a yeah. DNR, like a mm -hmm. do not resuscitate included in some type of executive will or order. Yeah. And they're like, hey, don't resuscitate me. Yeah. And at that point, I mean, you've yeah. signed your own fate. Exactly. It's not like the paramedic rolling on the oh, scene. No. Who no. wants to put CPR on you to keep you alive is like, oh, wait, hold on, yeah. donor. Yeah. Well, I think I know a guy. Yeah. <laughs> and to be it's honest, you know, I, I'm not a param paramedic, so yeah. I'm not sure how that goes. But, but nobody will ever, you know. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, now, um, in order to be a transplant coordinator, uh, is there schooling involved with that? And, like, what did you have to do to to get there? Like, uh, like how old were you when you started thinking, you know? Like, was it like nine years old and you finally had like your dollhouse or, or and you're like, I'm going to be a transplant coordinator. You're putting no. bar doll parts together. Like, yeah. So to me, it came later in life. I, I grew up in Spain. So, oh. um, so I wasn't really thinking about any of that. Uh, but, you know, um, eventually um, I, I had moved here and I had my my two babies became a single mom and my, one of the things that I was um, looking for it was an, a, a good job that's mm -hmm. gonna be you know a stable job um, and um, so I always loved nursing and I always um, loved the um, how amazing our bodies are and, mm -hmm. and how everything had to work just right for for us to be able to to be alive there's so many processes in our bodies just even if we're sitting here doing nothing there's all these uh, cel cells and body parts are making us being alive. So to me, that was always amazing. So anyway, I became a nurse, and and right after nursing school, I went into the ICU, mm -hmm. and that was that was really amazing because uh, you know just uh, how sick and how injured people would, would come, and all the things that that you have to do to to have this 
patients survive. So there's some PTSD with that. I can see it the way you're talking right yeah. now, right? Like you see your own post-traumatic. You have these guys, these young men on the front lines, you know, mm -hmm. that are dealing with, you know, seeing, you know, death, let's mm -hmm. say, or, you know, unfortunate situations. And then you also have our nurses and our doctors and staffs in the hospitals who are also dealing with this yeah. on that yeah. civilian side of the trenches. Yeah. Right. And so I'm sure you've seen your fair share of sadness yeah. at the ICU, which is a, 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 a stands for intensive care unit. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so we would get, um, a lot of these super sick patients were patients that needed an, an organ to survive. Mm -hmm. And, um, and to me, what it was amazing is to, to see them, uh, actually get transplanted and make the make them you know like be well and they come back two or three months down the road to bring you flowers and say thank you for all your care and to right. me it was that fascinating like I knew you know like I have known how sick you are and you couldn't even remember anything and look at you like you have an amazing new life and to me that's what made me think like I really want to focus on transplantation and um and the good thing is I was working for a transplant center mm -hmm. already. So, so I was able to, to, you know, um, transition into that, mm -hmm. kind so of gradually get into the transplant. Mm -hmm. lines. Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing that now? Uh, about six years now. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you see yourself doing it for. Yeah. It's, it's, it really is. Um, you really need to be passionate and love what you do because um, it's, it's definitely intense, and and your patients need you. They oh, need you yeah. no matter what time it is. They need you at 2 a.m. They need you on a weekend, on a holiday, and you have to be there for them um, because not everybody knows how to care for a transplant patient. Right. Um, so And even scheduling you here to get you in here. And you're like, Rad, look, my schedule, if I'm on call that day, or if I have to go in, I might have to go, you know? And like, do yeah. you, now, now, if that was the case, if you did get a call, right, would you mm -hmm. have to go meet the organ or do you do that or do you just help facilitate and make sure it gets from a to b yeah exactly that's what i do um i don't have to go anywhere but uh, i have to you know that that is the priority like if i'm if i get the phone call i have to drop what i'm doing because obviously somebody's life is depending on right then that so yeah 100 <laughs> percent. So everything drops oh my God. so <laughs> so then i'll just you know coordinate um the the ors call the patient in which is the most rewarding thing you know to call somebody and say like you're going in you know hey we got an organ for you we have your liver we have your kidney and and to see like grown as you know grown grown up men crying because you're telling them we got something for you there is it's amazing like so something that you don't think that you probably would have thought you would have got you know yeah. like so yeah. I, I bet people okay now if you're on a list there's just sit tight mm -hmm. right you know and, and uh, it's got to be a yin and a yang situation mm -hmm. you got all of this turmoil you're like mm -hmm. what if i don't what if i don't make it yeah. i'm on the list you yeah. know and i've been waiting now for a year and yeah. i've deteriorated but yeah you know i don't I, yeah. I can only imagine my, my sister-in-law, Debbie, and uh, she is a selfless, caring mother, and she donated her kidney to a stranger uh -huh. who she had no rhyme or reason to have to do that. Oh, that's pretty amazing. And she is just, I say she did it just to get six weeks off of work, <laughs> okay? So... <laughs> She changed somebody's <laughs> life. That's, she yes. literally changed <laughs> mm -hmm. her life. Mm -hmm. We have met her, the recipient, mm -hmm. become friends in the weirdest family way. Mm -hmm. Right? And it was never to be anything like that. But now mm -hmm. she's able to, she was on dialysis. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know who I'm talking about? And she the was recipient. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm just kind of keeping it real. But yeah. she was on dialysis and yeah. she was just living off of a machine. Mm -hmm. And her quality of life was just nothing. Mm -hmm. And so she's just waiting. And then all of a sudden, here comes Debbie. Mm -hmm. She's like, here, let me just take one out and give it to you. Mm -hmm. And if she had another one, she'd probably give it to someone else uh, too. hundred percent. Sure. So I know the value of that. And, uh, I think that's an awesome thing that you do, right? Yeah. You're a superhero, right? <laughs> well, Where's your cape? <laughs> huh? What? I don't know. It takes a huge team for me, for all of this to, to happen. I mean, you know, I, I, I definitely love to be a part of that team, but you know, you have surgeons that work, um, all the time like all the time like all the time because they're they're they dedicate their lives to to save these patients so um do they use like the word harvest no 
No. <laughs> no, no. No, that's the movies. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think at some point, maybe back then, they at some may point, have, they yeah. might have. But, you know, we have to respect the of Donna, course. right? And right. So that is, um, and, and everything is, is done with the utmost care and respect and, and respect the family because, uh, wow, they're doing something amazing. Like, yeah, they are. They, yeah. Someone's um, giving something up. Yeah. Probably maybe even at the end of their yeah. life. Yeah. You know, and. Yeah. Probably at a young age too, sometimes, sometimes and uh, yeah. you know, uh, to give to an older person. Mm-hmm. So the younger thirty-something-year-old might be giving something to the fifty-five-year-old, you know. Uh, but I, I bet you a million dollars that they're grateful. Yeah. You oh. Know, yeah. That fifty-five-year-old's like, thank you, and I'm sorry at the same time. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm a donor. I just want you to know that for the longest Thanks. time, I was not. Yeah. Because of that whole. Yeah. ignorant myth that i had in my head as a young 17 year old getting a license i was just like no donor uh, yeah. but now i can say that i am on yeah. my license and i have the bone marrow uh-huh. donation available because i matched with my b negative probably to whoever may need it uh-huh. and then um i think that that's awesome right mm-hmm. so <laughs> yeah it's you're you're amazing. almost an eagle scout too right you're a mom of an almost eagle scout oh right gosh. is that right yeah Yes, right. <laughs> and I say right now because I'm the son, I'm the dad of a son who's becoming just a scout. Yeah. he's getting a scout badge. Yeah, he just got a snow sports uh-huh. merit badge. But now he's just your son has really put in all the effort. You've re- you <laughs> you said your single mom. Oh my god, running transplants it's, and then running him to merit badge class. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a process. I mean, and I love the the fact that he's up to that point. But let me just tell you to, that all the dads and moms that have put the time to do this for their children mm-hmm. ah yeah there's a yeah. lot of respect and a lot of wow you have to give them because it is it is not easy and, and i'm glad that it's not easy because that isn't it shouldn't be easy to become an eagle scout it takes effort but yeah yeah but like look at <laughs> yeah. you like yeah seven day scout <laughs> camp need your a b and c waivers on file uh-huh. i need a doctor to see your son and every yeah. year it needs to be updated you got to get this you got to yeah. go there it's like uh, uh, wait yeah i have a job yeah hold on one second <laughs> i know yeah so last summer we um i just i was you know i'm so focused like you know let's just get you done and he did do like i don't even know like maybe four or five minute badges throughout the summer break which it was a lot of work so mm-hmm. they're the ones that are the hardest to get like the, the eagle require ones right focused on it during so, the summer break so, so that he could do that yeah so anyway i'm just ready for <laughs> him to <laughs> graduate get it done <laughs> Just get it done. Get it done. Oh, like, yeah, and your son's name is Braden. Uh-huh. And uh, so you're also a mom uh, of an airsoft war gamer, right? Uh-huh. So, and I do airsoft. Yeah. And that's how our paths cross. Yeah. You're coming in and being a supportive mom of yeah. your young 15 year old son, Braden. Yeah. Right? It wasn't easy. Can I just tell you? I no, mean... I want you to tell me. And, I, and, and I'm a dad, right? Dad, business owner, the whole nine yards. Tell me. Well, because. Again, I'm European. I'm from Spain, mm-hmm. and you know, like guns are not my thing, you know. Sure. And 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 I always had that uh, worry, like, what does airsoft lead to? Right. What, right. What's the next so, step? Yeah. So anyway, so it wasn't. It took a lot of hesitation and a lot of. Um, Right, I mean, I'm sure for Braden's bar and, and <laughs> your son's trying to convince you, mom, yes, mom, mom, and you're like, okay, yeah. well, let me see. I'll do this if you take me, you know. So, um, so you said, wait, 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 wait. You said he would do something yeah. if he would go airsofting. So yeah. he was willing to like clean the house mm. for yeah. a reward. Yeah, Braden. Well, I'm sure he didn't do it. The though. house. Yeah, we're calling you out, bro. Forever <laughs> and always on radio. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, and but. Spe- you know, so not necessarily. I don't want to necessarily put him on the spot, sure, but no. he definitely during middle school was horrible for him, mm-hmm. and um, and you know everything that you hear about middle school he went through, and me too. It was horrible. It was you know I I just didn't know you know mm-hmm. anyway. So um, he so he was bullied really badly. So anyway, the fact that he started going. Um, to herself and start making friends and and get to know the community and he's definitely become uh, a different kid you know more open more um he has buddies he's 
when I left, he was talking to somebody he met there. Mm -hmm. um, so like so Sped Love, <laughs> like yeah. Spencer Lee. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure who it is. Yeah, no, this one, but these guys but yes. make so many friends, you yeah. know, that come from all over, and they mm -hmm. all rally up inside the arena and they play yeah. war games, and then yeah. they're all 14, 15, 16, 17. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a zero tolerance for any BS. Mm -hmm. It's like just and they and they know that. Yeah, and that's good. That's you know that's that's really. And and everything. if they know that there's zero tolerance for it, and they. Um, hopefully, you know, emit that off onto even the older yeah. generation that's in there. Yeah. Right. It's like, hey, these young guys are, you know, to be looked at as red belts or brown belts in the mm -hmm. in karate, if you will. Yeah. Right. Like if I say, hey, Brayden, mm -hmm. I want you to run this game. Mm -hmm. Brayden would be like, yeah, OK, Rad, I got that. And I'd be mm -hmm. like, I bet he does. Yeah. He can at least run team yeah. deathmatch. Yeah. Right. And so when you start to rank up in the in the dojo or in the scouts, you know, mm -hmm. that responsibility sets in and. I've got young kids who I'm a believer in the youth, right? Yeah. I really am. I, mm -hmm. I employ them. I tell them, you know, um, I could hire you if you're 14. How old are you? 14. Oh, well, send me a resume. Maybe mm -hmm. you're really good at editing mm -hmm. and you can put my TikTok together really well, right? Or some type of thing. But um, it's nice to hear from a mom yeah. who had reservations. And yeah. I understand it's a gun game, yeah. right? And it's a little <laughs> bit more than that, yeah. right? We're in there really hunting each other. Mm -hmm. and uh, But it's better to get it out there. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, you know, and it's been great. Like, I really have no, no concerns. Um, I mean, obviously, he needs to work on doing his part of the bargain. Like, yes, some, sometimes. like your grades. Yes. See, so let me just oh say that gosh. as the dad here, yes. uh, she's a mom, and all of you listening right now, just get your grades up. Look, yeah. if you get your grades up, we can't come at you. Mm -hmm. If you do the things you say you're going to do, mm -hmm. we can't come at you. Mm -hmm. We're like you. Mm-hmm. We're just older than you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so I'm, I'm plus, you know, being able to meet people like you, you know, um, that's pretty, you know, it's pretty awesome to see what you do for the community and for well, thank you. everybody, you know. So yeah, it's great. Well, I believe that, you know, everybody <laughs> that comes through is a rock star <laughs> and uh, that they can shine. And I've had someone come in and uh, he told me uh, that he had clinical depression, like diagnosed mm. from psychiatric, mm -hmm. like you were clinically depressed, dude. Mm -hmm. and, and they're like, take this liquid form of like um, Prozac, maybe, probably. or something, whatever it is, lithium, mm -hmm. yeah. lithium, liquid yeah. lithium, yeah, probably. just to zone them out. Wow. But he's like, this arena coming in here and fighting mm -hmm. on Sundays and mm -hmm. on those days that are so popular. I'm yeah. thinking of the guy, I'm not yeah. going to say, but. Right, right. But I mean, he's, to hear that it makes him feel good and that he's welcome there and that he doesn't feel depressed in there. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big win, right? So yeah. it's like. You know, do something that makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. You as a mom need to do that as well. I know. Right? If it's a bowling league, but all of a sudden a transplant comes through, it's like, I got to stop on a perfect game. I know. Done. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's how it has to be for you, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, um, I mean, we, you know, uh, in regards of being on call, we we take turns. There's a, you know, a handful of us that do it. Mm -hmm. But still, yeah, when, when you're on, you're on. And, and the good thing is, like, not just me, but like my family, like my kids know that if I don't call, nothing goes. So I'm unfortunately, um, like I might busy. have, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I might have missed some important things, but but you know, it's more important to get somebody what they've been waiting for. What's so. what's some of the what's like really sought after? What's really needed? Like, what do you hear the most is like in demand, but like not available? What what is there an organ specifically that I don't know? It's like. Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, hearts, uh, hearts obviously is a, a big one. It takes one to give one. That's how it works. Right. And, oh. and livers, right? Because um, kidneys, at least you have more of an ability to do uh, life donation, like mm -hmm. your sister-in-law. Right, that's right. Um, and that's fantastic, you know, because um, so that is, uh, so there, there are more of it. But however, there are also a greater amount of patients waiting for kidneys too yeah. so so but yeah um but uh, so fortunately you can get a kidney from a from someone like say i wanted to just give a kidney up yeah then that would help the person on that list immediately absolutely you don't have to yeah so if you're listening uh -huh. and you want to do that yeah how would someone say hey i have i feel like i'm healthy enough to give a kidney mm -hmm. i feel like i can go through the recovery yeah how would they go about reaching out to say your team and saying does anybody match my match? Yeah, so we'll be uh, reaching out to the transplant center in particular. And, um, you know, like the uh, Utah has 
to the University of Utah and, and Intermountain Medical mm -hmm. Center. And, and they have a donor program, um, a life donor program. So, you know, just contact them and they'll walk you through to what you have to do. Um, I'm sure there's, um, I believe there's a questionnaire, which is kind of um, general, mm -hmm. but that, that puts them, um, or puts you on their radar and then they'll contact you and they'll just labs and things. start to work it out mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it's like hey we have a match and it's time for you to go under and yeah and then they go under now would somebody getting a kidney go under at the same time as the patient donating the kidney do they go side by side like uh they they go um one goes first um uh, usually like i mean we're talking about hour like an hour or so yeah like first. so so the one patient the donor the donor yeah, uh -huh. would get donated they uh -huh. donate their their mm -hmm. kidney and then they would go into recovery mm -hmm. and then that would immediately get moved mm -hmm. over somewhere probably in the same hospital yeah typically but we also have chains uh, going on that some of them are actually national change oh. so like um maybe we bring a, a kidney from out of state um and it comes to here and then we give a kidney elsewhere so there are some national chains going on but yeah typically typically um you'll have um like a family member a neighbor a friend mm -hmm. so it will be somebody that you already de delegated to so, like so i i may have maybe this is crazy is there is there only a certain amount of time that a kidney can be out of the human body yeah. and into another what's that time lapse that you have to get it transplanted well um so it depends um of you know how the donor situation but but typically you want to transplant it the sooner the better um i i think at most it'll be 24 hours at is most. it really put on ice uh well <laughs> no, ne not necessarily ice, but we, I mean, yes, there's ice involved, but there is a, a, a very, um, it's a, there's a pump. Uh, uh -huh. so, it's a, so everything's kind of keeping it going yeah. still. So like mm -hmm. if it's a heart mm -hmm. and it has to go from like, say, Las Vegas to Utah, yeah. it would be put on some type of pump to keep it going. So I'm not sure about the heart, to oh, okay, be honest, because okay. I don't, but possibly, but I know with pancreas? kidneys, uh, the pancreas doesn't have a, any need for that, huh? No, no, but the kidney does and, I, and nowadays there are trialing a, a pump for livers oh the trialing a uh -huh. pump for the liver yeah huh? we yeah so so that's pretty amazing too. so like if i was a dad of a child who needed a liver and the kid's little like say a year old mm -hmm. and i matched could i give a piece of my liver yes. to my kid yeah you can donate a segment of your liver to i yeah. can live with just mm -hmm. enough of my liver it regrows Oh, yeah, so, so like X-Men. Yeah. Oh, Wolverine. I always told people I was Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, I was like. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. So, and we're doing uh, live, live liver donors. And, yeah, you can donate a portion of a liver to, to somebody and, and both of you. And that grows back. Grows, yeah, f for the recipient and huh. for you. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, it's Jeez, and I'd get nurtured by my wife if I gave it. I mean, that's not trying to be <laughs> selfish, but she'd probably baby me a little bit. She'd be like, you're a nice guy. <laughs> Let me get kisses on your forehead. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How much nicer can I get? <laughs> I think, I mean, you know, donors are heroes. I mean, yeah, there's no really. other way to put it. It's pretty amazing. It yeah. is. It is. And, I, and again, I mean, oh, wow. There's just so much to, like, really process mm -hmm. when it comes to it. And, mm -hmm. and, and the fact that you are one of the coordinators mm -hmm. that handle that is is super awesome. And, yeah. and uh <laughs> You know, again, the schooling, though, uh, I know I, maybe we cut off, right? I was talking. Did you have to get – you're an RN, right? Registered nurse. I am, yeah. And then I got my Bachelor's of Science of Nursing. Um, and then I have to – and I certify transplant coordinator. So there's also um, a huge test that you have to – A do. huge test. It is, yeah, because you have to be certified for all organ transplants, even, you know. Lungs, like, even, uh, yeah. eyes. No, we do the solid. So okay, we're doing okay. like we're doing. So it would be um, heart, kidney, pancreas, liver, and bowel. So oh. so we have to know about all of it, um, and not just the actual uh, particulars of the the organ itself, but also the infection, the potential to to infections and and what um, could have the domino effect, right? And the medications mm -hmm. and 
medications are huge, right? Because para- yeah. like actually the organ, uh, organ um, donation and, and coordination of these uh, organ allocations um, is a portion of my job. Like the majority of my job is um, to care for those patients that have received the, the, transplants. the transplants. So, so I have to uh, most of my days managing medications right. and looking at labs and watch out for in- infections and what if you have an infection we do you know so there's a, how, to, how to stop that yeah. and try to get rid of yeah. oh yeah wow you have so much yeah <laughs> so, so you had to say okay i'm going from spain to utah mm-hmm. <laughs> you said okay i'm a single mom and i'm gonna hash this life out mm-hmm. you took care of your daughter mm-hmm. and your son mm-hmm. you would put yourself through school mm-hmm. You graduated with a Bachelor of Science mm-hmm. in of nursing. In nursing. Mm-hmm. You got your transplant coordinator mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. Took the big ass test that mm-hmm. it was. Okay, yeah, huge yeah. test. Learning all about the different organs <laughs> of transfer. Mm-hmm. All while taking your son to merit badge classes <laughs> and learning all about what a square dot is. And Girl Scouts. And for Girl Scouts. Scouts. Yeah. Oh yeah, for your oldest. Oh yeah. And then also trying to put a Spotify list of your own together and oh, enjoy your own yeah. life, right? <laughs> I swim because uh, my daughter is a huge swimmer. So so that was... So you got swim meets. All the time. M- scouting. Mm-hmm. And then also probably a musician in the family with your mm-hmm. son being a rock star guitar mm-hmm. player, right? Mm-hmm. He just did, uh, what was that, Alice in Wonderland by <laughs> Jefferson Airplane, right? Okay. That's awesome, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Whatever makes you laugh. That's what we're here oh for. Oh, my gosh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, and then here's Rad ringing you up saying, Inma, yeah. come throw down on the mic with me. <laughs> and I just want to say you've been super wonderful. Yeah. You're super sweet. I, I think any patient is happy to have you with your bedside <laughs> manner. Oh, and uh, you keep checking their labs and their meds. And if you're a live life donor, mm-hmm. is that, did I say that right? Uh, What's it called? If I'm alive and a donor and I want to... Yeah, a, 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 a living life living, donor. living donor, yeah, whether it's a kidney or a liver. Donor. Right, and yeah. you want to uh, learn about how you can donate. I'm sure you can Google, mm-hmm. who do I contact to donate my cur- my kidney? Yeah. Now, listen, when you do that, try to hit up like the university in your state mm-hmm. and say, do you have a hospital? Can I talk to the hospital? Why don't mm-hmm. you call the hospital? Yeah. Don't Google who do I get my kidney to. <laughs> You yeah. don't need to go down that road. Right, the internet is weird, right. okay? Yes. So yeah. just call a local hospital and just say, hey, you know, mm-hmm. I've had a, you know, a, an epiphany and here's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And also, if you're, if you're on the ropes and you're hoping for a transplant, um, you know, I don't really pray often. I just send positive vibes and I really know, want you to know that I hope that it all works out. And Inma here, I'm sure you want it to work out. Oh, absolutely. You know, just stay strong. Mm-hmm. Don't let it get to you. Um, listen to my podcast call me hit me up whatever dm me on instagram and Mm -hmm. i'll talk with you i'm real easy Mm -hmm. and um thanks again inma for letting me have you i think we're pretty good on all the awesome content that you gave us today and do you have anything you want to say or any shout outs you want to give no i just want to say thank you and thank you for you know make sure that um everybody go see their local businesses and you know like you guys and tactical um airsoft in salt lake because you know that's more important. So you're saying support local. Support local. Thank you, and I appreciate that. Saying support <laughs> tactical airsoft supply in Salt Lake and Layton. I worked from the basement of my house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's at two in the morning amazing, selling huh? people stuff. My wife comes downstairs. Aaron, I'm all what? She's like, it's two in the morning. Everybody's like, we're gonna go rad Whew, mm-hmm. out the house, mm-hmm. right? And then we finally got a shop, mm-hmm. and here we are today. So it's been a pleasure. Yeah. And Zach, you're great. I know that you're back there on the mic, and. uh you know, transplants, bro. What do you, what can you say about that? <laughs> They're great. They are great, huh? Yeah. Okay, well, thanks again for listening to Fired Up with Rad, and I am your host. This was with, with Inba yeah. Day, and I'm going to say peace. Peace. <laughs>